2009. In population terms, Israel is ranked 97th in the world, while the West Bank is at 140, and Gaza is 149th out of 237 countries. On a point of interest, the source for that last statistic came from the CIA and appears even they are confused over the status of the region. According to them, Palestine does not exist, there's confusion over the borders of the Zionist state and they've even separated the West Bank and Gaza, categorizing them as different countries. Cathy, how would you used to work for the CIA? How how would you analyze that? <laughs> don't please don't ask me to defend the CIA. I worked for them quite a long time ago. Uh, I think it, it, this is just symptomatic of the the anomalous situation. If the CIA counts Gaza as one country and the West Bank as another country and actually ranks them in a ranking of uh, of countries in terms of their population, that's just absurd. The key point there with those those last statistics is that inside the borders of, of original Palestine, that is between the Mediterranean and the uh, Jordan River, Palestinians now, Palestinian Arabs now uh, are at least at parity with Jews uh, and possibly and very soon inevitably will uh, pass them in numbers. So there will be more Palestinians uh, than Jews. Uh, I'd like to, if I could take a minute to go back to uh, what Eyal uh, uh, was talking about. I think, I don't think that, as you, as I think you were saying, that Zionism is only a Western project, a Western conceit. Uh, I think the West went along with the Zionist leaders, and to me the essence of Zionism is to have a Jewish state. It doesn't have to necessarily be a state, a, a, a Jewish majority, Jewish exclusivist, Jewish uh, homeland at least. Which means, if you if you uh, if you center that project on a land uh, in which, uh, as the statistics showed, Jews uh, in 1948 only made up a third of the population, the only way to have a Jewish, an exclusivist Jewish state, a Zionist state, is to get rid of the Palestinians, which is exactly what the Israelis did in 48, did again in 67, and that is what they, you know, on a slow basis, they're doing now. That, that is Zionism, and it seems to me the only way, if you're talking about a solution to the problem, as I said earlier, you, ha you have to solve the problem between the two parties to the conflict, the two parties who are living there. Uh, I think you objected to calling them the two parties to the conflict, but between the Jewish people and the Palestinian people, um, the only way you resolve it uh, is, is to satisfy uh, both people, to give both people justice, and you don't give Palestinians justice by giving them one quarter at the very most. That's the only thing, that's the very best that's under, under consideration now, one quarter of their original homeland. And in fact, that one quarter, that 22 percent of Palestine, which constitu are constituted by the West Bank and Gaza, is, uh, is going to be given back to them at best in pieces. And in, if, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if I can, <clears throat> in the last 25 years that I'm uh, lecturing, writing, and uh, filming about the uh, Palestinian, Israeli-Palestinian conflict, I always refuse to speak in the name of uh, Palestinians, but I speak from a standpoint of an Israeli. And my opposition to Zionism is also the opposition to a discourse that tried to put the conflict as a conflict between Jews and Palestinians. If it's a conflict between Jews and Palestinians, it means that the 10, 12, 14, whatever million Jews in the world are facing the Palestinians. It means that we acknowledge the, the Zionist paradigm, which I refuse. I believe that there is a national community, and I joined Tony in his analysis, which he called the Israeli Jews. This is the national community that is facing the Palestinians, the Arab Palestinians, and not the Jews, and not the Jews, the Israeli Jews. The Zionist, the Zionist Israeli, project, the Israeli Israel Jews. Israel purports Israeli, to speak in the name of all Jews in no, the no, world. No, 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 no. Yes, I'm, it does. Saying, I'm saying we have to be, we have to be careful. But by trying to oppose Zionism, in fact, we are adopting Zionist discourse, saying that this is a conflict between the Jews and the Palestinians. It's accepting that so all the 14 million Israel, Israeli, Israeli, Israeli Jews, which Israeli Jews represent a certain amount among the Jews, like the British Jews and the French Jews. There are also Israeli Jews. This is one. That when I was saying the Zionist, the Zionist is a Western movement, we have to remember that Zionists never thought 
about Eastern uh, Oriental Jews, about the Arab Jews, which are yeah. part of the Arab, which are part of the Arab world, and this is why never, I think that it's not. About no, that? they didn't think about. When that. are you talking about? Never. I'm talking. I'm talking that even in 1940, even in 1953, in the moment of the big immigration of 600,000 Moroccan Jews and the Yemenite Jews, there was this big sentence of Ben Gurion was saying we have to hurry to make out of them Jews. Because yeah. they were considered as Arabs, All right, so but they can be counted another, as Jews. And okay, that's what they are counted as Jews Zionism. because, l like, like the Orthodox Christians that came from Russia, are counted like Jews. <laughs> what is in fact, what is in fact the definition of a Jewish state today? It's a non-Arab state. This is the definition. This is why we will accept. We accepted in Israel 700,000 non-Jews from so ex-Soviet Union to be considered as Jews. Why? Because they are white. This is the idea. Because this is the idea. Seen, it's, yeah. a non, it's nothing to do with the definition of Jewishness. But to come back to our main subject, which is the future of a Palestinian state, I think that one of the main issues today, which is, first of all, to acknowledge that this kind of statistic are even not taking in account the Palestinian discourse that acknowledges that there are also and there were Palestinian Jews. It's not because yep. you are a Jew that you yep. cannot be Palestinian. It is obvious that the Palestinians will be left with no territory in which to establish a viable state, but completely enclosed within the barrier and the occupied Jordan River Valley. Former US President Jimmy Carter who wrote these words in his book, Palestine, Peace, Not Apartheid. Why is no one in the White House listening to him, Kathleen? That's the critical question. The, the short, the very short answer, but very right answer, I think, is the, uh, the influence of the Israel lobby. The supporters of Israel in the United States, uh, both organized, the organized supporters and the unorganized supporters. Is uh, this one of the reasons this, that you're very sort of pessimistic about the future of the Palestine-Israeli yes, conflict? Yes, I am. I think, uh, you know, Jimmy Carter uh, uh, understands the situation now, but he's been out of office for 30 years and he only came to a point where he was able to understand it, where he had the, basically the freedom to understand it and talk about it after he left office. You know, and yet our remaining two guests are optimistic. I mean, you don't see an impossible situation, do you? From my point of view, unless the situation changes, now I, I, I don't ascribe goodwill to the political leadership of Israel, but I believe that the Palestinians are not going to go away. Uh, over the last nine years, uh, the pressures, and I know this is something I know uh, vicariously, but also from personal experience, the Palestinians living particularly on the West Bank and the Gaza Strip have been exposed to tremendous pressures. And many of them have left, but they haven't evaporated as a community. We haven't evaporated as, as a people with the national consciousness of ourselves being a people. But we have lost as a national leadership in the shape of Yasser Arafat. There's no more Yasser Arafat. So our own sort of Moses character has disappeared off the scene. Is there and, anybody in the background that could I mean, uh, I, I mean, look, obviously people point to someone like Marwan Barghouti, for example, but uh, that's not going to be a situation that, 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 I mean, right now we can't guess because we don't know if he's going to be in jail and for how long and, and, and when he eventually comes out of jail, what would the situation on the ground actually be like. But the point is that the Palestinian people, for, for the moment, still exist. Um, the Israelis aren't going to go away. And, and, and I, would, I would repeat this, this, this claim that I made earlier, that in fact the creation of Israel was a historical injustice. And, and many Palestinians are continuing to pay the price for that today. And for the Palestinian refugees who are living in the refugee camps, it's not a question of history, it's a question of the present and, and their future. There's a big difference between Yasser Arafat and Mahmoud Abbas. Uh, Mahmoud Abbas does not have charisma. You know, the guy actually would talk sense and, and he would make very coherent arguments about the need to build a state of institutions and so on. I mean, the guy is, is, is effective in certain ways. He's, he could be an effective leader, but he's not going to be a great leader. But he's trapped in a geostrategic situation that's not doing him any favors. And, you know, it's, it's almost becoming immaterial if he becomes the next president of the Palestinian Authority or not. So whether he's bluffing about it to try to win something from the U.S. because he wants to persuade the U.S. or that he, you know, we're working on this assumption that he's the only Palestinian leader who can deliver an agreement which is mildly acceptable to the U.S. and, and Israel. 
it, it doesn't matter now. I, I, I really don't think it matters because he's not going to be the person who makes the final agreement for the Palestinian people.